Okay. Um, who, we, have, who do want to we have begun. We have begun. Hello, people at home. This is Freebooters. It's been a while. Um, I think that's about all I got to say. Quite a lot's happened, and I've got no notes or preparation, which I think isn't isn't that one of the ethoses of the show? Uh, yes. Yes. Oh my. So, oh my God. My everything's super laggy. <laughs> oh my God. Do you know? It's almost. It's. Go on. It's it's coming Ooh. up to our year long anniversary. Is it really? Yeah. Well, I say coming up. It's in October. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've got rid of I've got rid of streaming back to you on Discord because that was killing everything. Ah, right. Okay. Like, like, still, what are we still going? Itself, streaming itself. Streaming itself wasn't working. Oh. But uh, yeah, that's really yeah. Okay. So, okay, we're good now. Yeah. Okay. Is it your anniversary? All right. Uh, well, our as in like our your your our, yeah. our anniversary freebooters anniversary. That's kind of amazing. It does not. I would, uh, not, have, I would, think... would not have guessed that. Yeah, it's uh, we started in about uh, October, I think it was. I mean, I think this might actually be the first freeboot was the twenty third, twenty twenty three. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Which it's, is it's that, I've, I checked that the other day, and that kind of like blew my mind. It's like wow, because it feels like oh, we keep oh, we we'll just we'll do another one. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while, and been a while has turned into what like ten months. <laughs> yeah. So. So the the one year anniversary was was two months of freebooters and then a ten month break. That's the schedule. It was my fault. My my mental health has fallen down a hole. Uh, and so entirely my fault, not Chris's fault. Yeah, but to be fair to you, you keep trying to crawl out of the hole, I and do. you get a bit better at it every time. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know, like what's changed since the last freebooters? AI's happened, which yeah, is kind of interesting. Um. Uh, uh, just to nip this one in the bud, everyone's yeah. gonna say, "Oh, it's not really AI because of this and this and this." And I, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm, I'm probably gonna call it AI just because that's what everyone calls it now, right? Yeah, that like is, that is the word for it. Whether it, whether it's accurate or not is entirely beside the point. Yeah, uh, but I've been using it loads, and it's kind of interesting. I like. I think my my chief issue with AI is a little different to everyone else's. Everyone's always worried about oh, the intellectual property stealing stuff from artists, stealing. Uh, all this, like, use scraping huge amounts of data sets without permission and stuff like that. And that's obviously, like, a, a conversation to be had. But I think the, the issue that I come back to it with every single time is that it's a technology that I think is it's here to stay, right? Like, it's here to stay because it benefits capitalism and we're in a capitalist society. It makes rich corporations bigger with a technology that is fundamentally almost entirely controlled and within the remit of big corporations. Yeah. So I can't imagine a circumstance where if AI can even be a little bit useful, that it's it's not going to be a part of our life forever now. Whether or not it's chatbots, whether or not it's uh, CGI in Hollywood cinema. And, and I, do, I do think there are good things and I think there are bad things that are going to come out of it. Um, one of the things I think is going to be quite interesting, which I haven't heard too much, too many people talk about, is the idea that it can do things like cgi and how like how many indie film studios are now going to be able to have like hollywood size special effects with the help of this kind of thing yeah no for sure and uh yeah i think um i mean yeah okay there's so much to say and i don't want to get too much mm. into it because i'm not that interested honestly i'm interested in the social implications but i'm not interested in the technology so much um mm. Well, the technology is just like big computers crunching lots of, you know, like yeah. it's not an interesting piece of technology. It's a big piece of technology yeah. that is sort of made available by all our, you know, by the internet, really. I mean, it should be what we've got at the moment, all, all the stuff that's being hyped at the moment, are, they're language models. That is specifically what mm. they are, right? They're not, you know, a sort of a cleverer AI than that. And this is a very simplified way to look at it but what what they do is really they anything you ask it to provide you they take sort of the average it's not exactly an average is it mm. but they take the average of what everybody's ever done in there and sort of take you know make something convincing based on that so it's yeah. you know it's 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 a big averaging machine really you know what I mean? yeah, people it use it for like illustrations and stuff and they describe a scene you know it's not inventing that it's looking at things that have that those criteria and then sort of in in in, mm. in a more intelligent way than just blurging it all together, making something that fits those criteria based on what it's seen. It can't invent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, yeah, I think a lot of people are misunderstanding or misusing AI when they put in, like one of the big, like easy ways that you can look at how AI sort of understands the world in terms of its 
it uses a language model, is to give it vaguely difficult multiplication to do. It will give you what looks like the right answer, but actually not the right answer. Oh, really? And I think that's, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, a... to give it like, to give it a million, you know, with lots of different numbers, times a million with lots of different numbers. It'll get like the first couple of digits right, the last couple of digits right, but the, the middle numbers will just be like, that's interesting. Random numbers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, because it is the machine. Someone described it on Mastodon as mansplaining as a service. And I think that's kind of it. Yeah. It's like, it tells you what you want to hear confidently and without hesitation. And it's like... Our, 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 our mutual... I won't, I won't name them because... Yeah, but our mutual friend is doing um, uh, like a, a, a computer science course. A big, you know, a starting level computer mm -hmm. science course. Uh, college and um one of their assignments was to make a sort of um go from room to room adventure game in python mm -hmm. uh just out of curiosity like i gave i gave that brief to chat gpt to see what it would come up with and it did it made a sort of rpg game where you go from room to room oh, wow. uh, and the rooms could um the rooms it defined a few monsters that could appear in the rooms and then there was a it gave a random chance for each monster to appear in each room but it actually given a zero chance for any mon monster to appear in any room. So it made it a game, but made it so that it was impossible impossible for any monsters to ever appear. So it made a very <laughs> boring game. Thought, How much is that? But it's kind of I, impressive uh, and kind of dumb. You know that that's AI. Yeah, the that's that is AI. I think I I um, asked it to do me a CSS file. And it came up with so many fields that just weren't necessary. Mm. It was just like, it, it, it basically, it presented with, with me what it thought a CSS file was and thought like. that's what I wanted. Yeah. 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 Uh, but it, I, in many ways, like, so, but there are ways in which I found it really useful in my help as a, as a, as a news reporter, right? Because obviously we work with language all the time. Mm. Uh, one of the best ways I found it, right? So the trick, the big trick with uh, ChatGPT in particular, the others I found to be not, not quite as good is you've got to give it the information to process. You've got to almost mm. give it everything, right? Never expect it to have any contextual data or anything like that. If you need to uh, supply context, you just put like, this, this is some stuff for context and then you, you put it in, right? Um, but with, with, with ChatGPT, the thing that I found is quite useful is getting it to mark your work. Uh, so right. you can okay. put in like your, your written work and you can say, can you just check this for grammar errors, spelling errors, all that kind of stuff. And what it will do, unlike other spell checky type pieces of software, is that it will it'll mark it like a teacher. So it'll be like, OK, you've made an error here. Uh, you've misspelled this here. You've used a comma when you should have used a semicolon, all this kind of stuff. And um, and I found that to be like super useful because then you sort of like it feeds back into you. It doesn't just yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also good at like really weird stuff that you don't quite know what the best tool for the job is. So, for example, uh, if I need to copy and paste something out of a PDF, right? So, you know, if you've ever copied and pasted anything out of a PDF, right? So you scroll across, Control C, Control P into like a notepad or something. It'll just it'll give it'll put in the line breaks where they occurred in the PDF. So, how do you know how to paragraph it out appropriately? Yeah. Well, ChatGPT will. You just put it to ChatGPT and say, look, can you just take out the line breaks for this, please? Or can you change every date to UK date? Or can you um, write this in the first person instead of the third person or something like that? For tasks like that, that are just really kind of like miscellaneous. So th things I would do like in said and orc, you can just get ChatGPT yes. to do, which is, I hate that. Like, obviously that's useful, but I hate it. It's like, why have I learned these things? You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, this is, yeah, this is kind of interesting. What, because what will become of art? That's the interesting thing now. Well, also, I mean, the, the way it's doing these things is by looking up examples of people doing it in said and orc and then using that, right? So if everybody's yeah. using ChatGPT, we're frozen at that point of capability. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, possibly. I mean, it'd be, it, like, it will be interesting to see what the social implications are from this. I just asked uh, ChatGPT to make some CSS, and it it, it did. I didn't yeah. give it any further instructions than make some CSS. <laughs> <laughs> does it? So does does that mean like? Does it mean that like people like me can now effectively code substantially at a higher skill than I would have been? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before ChatGPT, D uh, does that mean that we are? And people have made this argument with things like spell check and and everything else in between. Is that? Something like this could be a crutch to make us lazy. Now, this is particularly interesting because going back to my point about it being 
technology is made by large corporations fundamentally for large corporations having us dependent on this technology is kind of like sitting in a very well placed out trap that you know like society over a couple of decades will become incredibly uh dependent on your likes of chat gpt in the thing, order i mean to... that i think that's that's an argument that comes up a lot and i think it's that's really that's just being human you know we've had technology since you know the first time we picked up a rock kind of thing mm. and as, as soon as the technology becomes useful we become dependent on it there's yeah a thing, I suppose... there's a thing uh, uh we I, I think we regularly go a bit like kids today but um uh, kids say when i was a kid um, and I couldn't do mental arithmetic because we had calculators and my parents would always be, you're not always going to have a calculator. You know, you should learn mental arithmetic. You know, it's useful, blah, blah, blah. And we have, they were wrong. We do always have calculators. Yeah. But that's how I feel about my Zuma friends who can't spell for shit. They just rely on spell checker. And I'm like, you should, you know, mm. you should learn to spell. You can't rely on, you're not gonna, always going to have a spell. But they are. They're, they're always going to have a spell checker. Yeah. I mean, sometimes if you install like Firefox on a Mac or something, you've got to install the library separately or whatever. Yeah, but that's yeah. about as far away as you ever get. Realistically, from a... yeah. So I, yeah. I, I feel that strongly. You know, I feel like I feel spelling is a useful skill. You should learn it. But like, practically, I'm wrong, you know. Mm. But the, th the, the, the what's interesting is that with things like spell checkers and rocks, is that you don't need a big corporation to sort of, they're, they're somewhat independent from big corporations like a a relatively small open source project can can make a spell checker they yeah. cannot make an ai yeah and i think that this is that's where i think the distinction lies in is whether it can be so for the it, first it, time it, we've got these we've 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 meandered into that previously like when when things mm. like microsoft word became you know the way to pro you know to mm. use text on a computer uh, it's big corporations having control over the tools we use right but i think this is far more profound than that Yes, and because it's it's every time we use it, we are depending on that corporation. Mm. Every time we open, I could open up a, a very very old computer. Like I think George R R Martin, he writes uh, Game of Thrones on a on a DOS machine with Word Perfect or something mm. like that. Like yes, it took a big corporation to make Word Perfect, I assume, uh, but like he can still use Word Perfect decades after it's 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 become defunct. Yeah. So yeah. we wouldn't be able to do that with ChatGPT. ChatGPT relies on the sheer power. And it, it might also be the case that this technology might have a ceiling insofar as it takes so much processing power that how how do we distribute that? Obviously, it being like a server client type of layout, like not everyone can have a uh, the type of a computer that can do AI crunching at home. Mm. But because of the nature of the internet, because we can all hook into bigger computers. So it kind of sets that sort of paradigm it, it didn't set that paradigm because we've always had that idea of like phoning home stuff that phones home mm. uh, ever since what like the internet or the first smart devices or 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 anything like that but uh it it, it sort of solidified it to you want to use this computer you've got to to phone home yeah it's like and and people know that as well it's not like it's not like a hidden but fact you can it's not like you can because um my you know my lack of expertise is going to show here but you 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 can run the model on fairly modest hardware can't you i mean iphones and stuff run run the model but like it's it's creating the model that's the um hard bit so i think with with open language models i think you can don't download them and do stuff with them locally oh really okay i believe so Oh, that's well. That's that's maybe a little bit more promising than, than but I it's still a I model it was... that you know the, the creation of the model you know, it's not a thing that you can edit. You take the model and you apply it. You know, it's a black yeah. box. Yeah. Does it, and uh, that box, it, that black box in in physical size, that can be what like downloaded or used or taken offline, or does do you still need to? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how like, big they are. I assume I assume in the hundreds of megabytes realms, but I'm absolutely guessing. Yeah. Oh, hundreds of megabytes. I was thinking hundreds of terabytes or petabytes. Yeah. No. No. Like I don't that. think the the yeah this is where i like the yeah no i don't know i'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna be talking shit if i try and yeah i, I think, right, I think sure, the uh... sort of the model that is outputted that is, that is the thing you use in programs i think is relatively small but i might be wrong about that the data set mm -hmm. that that is generated from is immense obviously yeah uh, well um okay. yeah chat, the thing that i find a is... second while i go for a piss is that good yeah sure 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 um 
so one of the things in in AI that I think is is particularly interesting is um, if uh, and you can try this one out yourself for for free is Bing AI. Uh, Bing AI is the old Dali stuff. They've kind of like sort of supercharged it and and made it better. And they've put it into so you can go into to Bing. You have to sign up for like a Microsoft account if you don't already have one. And then you uh, you basically put in a description, and out comes four different images based around that description. Um, and it can be really interesting. It's it depends what you need as to whether or not it can work in production. I've used it in production, and it's kind of interesting because it allows you to give a so in in a lot of cases like i use a lot of stock images stuff that you get uh in, you know like the, the very sort of sanitized very basic pictures of 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 items close up or anything like that you know very very sort of soulless and, and generic images but with bing ai i can put in a description that's a little bit more specific to the thing that i'm talking about and it will come up with uh it will come up with an associated uh like graphic or picture or anything like that um or it can even of course do thumbnails for videos as well i drew how much of that did you hear uh all of it yep oh, oh fantastic yeah. oh you can still hear me ah yeah, brilliant yeah. um but yeah no i definitely recommend giving uh, bing ai a go with it because it does the image of what chat gpt can do and we we use them instead of uh, yeah uh stock photos or not yeah. instead of like but yeah. like as an alternative to stock photos because sometimes sometimes they get a bit wild sometimes they get a bit uncanny valley like you'll you'll get like a picture like a like a, maybe even a graphic if, you, if you're asking it for to to play with a graphic or something you have a graphic of a child celebrating their a-level results or something you've got a graphic of a kid holding their thing up in the air but like you'll there'll be some weird things in it that you don't notice at first yeah that come through like they'll have a like a they'll only have like one eye or they'll have like <laughs> seven or eight fingers on a hand or something like that like it it gives you very closely what you you want i came across a website be... the other day that was um yeah it was, it, it was a bunch of stock images for you know for illustrating articles for whatever mm. um and they were clearly all ai generated it took me a while to notice but i did i did there's something odd about these images and like I, you know mm. any, and then i was like oh these are all ai generated and it was just people sort of sitting on park benches it was a phone mm. website it was people sitting on benches or in cafes just using phones. And it was, yeah, they were quite convincing. And yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's going to, it's going to impact like small time illustrators. You know, like every magazine article has, you know, often, mm. you know, a custom illustration at the top of the whatever, or yeah, or, you know, stock photography. Like the people who provide that are just mm. going to be, you know, broke. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to absolutely change the jobs market in a way that I, I, I'm I'm legitimately quite fearful of I think in, in, to be honest, um, because it is going to allow the de-skilling of a lot of jobs. So anything that like a, an illustrator or something would get paid, uh, a sub, you know, like one would hope a substantial amount of cash for, uh, it can be done by the work experience kid, or it can I mean, be done I, with. I, just slightly to interject, like for anything a bit more like avant-garde, and because again, it can't invent. Mm. For, you know, like illustrators who have a very pronounced particular style, it's, it can't do, I mean, it can copy them, but, you know, it can't, broadly speaking, do that. I think you're still going to have yeah. illustrators for the top, but for like, for the, you know, like, like your automots and, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. And actually, interestingly enough, I went to the, the um, Tate St. Ives a um, couple of months ago and I saw a lot of the modernism uh, that was in, in that gallery. There's some, that was really good, actually. I do recommend stopping mm. by. Um and uh, and 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 that's that. And also, there's a Newland Gallery. I, I think it's quite f well known among art, art folks. Um, but there was a, a exhibition by someone called Elizabeth Loveday, and it was watercolor, um, uh, like realism. And each of the um, paintings, there was a collection of paintings, and they were done in watercolor. And they re they had like characteristics of all of the different towns in Cornwall or like all the different sort of like at the, at the far end of like around Land's End, uh, Penzance and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and they had like incredibly uh, like characters like um, uh, like fishermen and, and people like that that were done in a really kind of abstract but interesting way. Um, anyway, sorry, I'm getting off track. Um, but the like I don't think you could ever really get an AI to do to do like modernism. Modernism is the one I'm thinking of, isn't it? Where it's a bit like abstract and representative and 
Yeah, I mean, it can do it by copying what's already out there, right? Well, this is it. Like, this probably requires a little bit more nuance than you can just write down. If that may, if you know well, what you I mean. Can say, like, I mean, if you can give it a few art, like if you, if you, you know, give give me something in the style of somewhere between, you know, one Miro and uh, hands up, or something like that, and it, it would probably do a good job of that. Possibly. Uh, I don't know. Like, um, yeah, I do mean all. Sometimes when you ask it to do something of a uh, something realistic or something, you know, like it, it will it will throw in what look like modernist twists. Um, that look like it could it could be like so it could be like, um, which which kind of are a bit uncanny valley, and I kind of actually like a little bit where you've got a what looks on the surface to be a very normal painting or a very normal picture, but there's some there's just 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 a few things in the background like the woman with three arms or yeah no the... sure yeah did you see that um you see that beer commercial made by an AI no you should look that up it is fucking unsettling in, in fact I'll, I'll I'll thing you we can watch a little bit of it now oh nice uh see the tr the thing is with the AI generator is that it to me it feels when like like every time i feel evoked by anything that is done by the, the bing ai i always think no it's a lie like it's a complete <laughs> false manipulation so like you're not supposed to feel anything and then it's like you know you're not supposed to like it's 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 convincing you that it's art but it's not art does that does is that yeah, that's a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's no, a bit wanky I, to I say, but it kind no, of. I know, I know like... exactly what you mean by that. Yeah, I think, in terms of creating static images in a particular, like you know, avant-garde style or whatever, like you were saying, I think mm. that in itself is going to become a skill, like describing exactly what you want. That, mm. I mean, that's going to be the job of future illustrators, to a large extent. I think describing exactly what you want. Mm. Uh, but yeah, this big that would... If you're looking at this, it's it's. It's very convincing up until the point where people are drinking. You're like this AI does not understand oh. how people drink. Um, where, have you put the link somewhere? Uh, uh, no, sorry, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just streaming it. I'll stick it in Discord. There you go. Well, there we go. But just yeah, like it really nails the tone of a beer commercial. Uh, but then yeah, the drinking is oh wow disturbing. That's cr yeah. Oh my <laughs> that's better than some of the ones I've seen. Yeah, although. Some of them, I, I just see them like eat. Oh no! Someone just ate ate ate, ate the drink. <laughs> it doesn't know if it's a can or a bottle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and it can't do writing as well. Yeah, we tried because sometimes, like when it comes to like crime stories and stuff like that, obviously, it's like obviously there are many circumstances where we can't use a picture. Um, so, and getting AI to not necessarily depict anything but represent something can also be rather difficult uh, because it does get a little bit protective of its. Um, uh, you know, like the sensibilities filter, if you know what I mean. Like it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't like doing things that are in any way close to being edgy or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, it can't do, it can't do writing, and it, but it tries. So sometimes, if we do something with police, it'll try and write police on the back of their jackets, but it'll be like, po, po ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess I guess at that point they mm. need to plug the text generation one into it and then just render it in a font and then position it in the image rather than because the image thing is just mm. based on it does it doesn't understand the semantics of text obviously right yeah yeah like if you look at if you look at this uh, AI generated beer commercial the text that are on people's shirts it it's like an idea of what text is yeah. or like I don't know I don't even want to say like a foreign language but it's like two so words yeah yeah if, yeah it's what text looks like. <clears throat> to a computer almost yeah like there's a I vaguely see like a letter e in a weird in a weird font but uh 
It captures the spirit of the yeah. commercial, though. Yeah, not really. Very like a, it's very like a, a Bud Light kind of commercial. But and yeah, um, the, um, I think all the cans and stuff are very Pepsi looking, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that that is true. That is very Pepsi. Summer bottles, some of some of pint glasses. Yeah. <laughs> some of these weird like. In the shape of a bottle, but with the texture of a can. Yeah, yeah. And then the the, the random fire, which I I, I get like a <laughs> bit like beer commercials. I think I mean, it's a long time since I've seen ads like much, but like barbecues and stuff like that, right? I think it's. I think that's what it's pulling. <laughs> yeah, the, the random fire is great. Oh man. Ah, uh, yeah. So so. Yeah, it's 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 all been kind of interesting. Um, the the that kind of stuff though, it it does make me think like we're just being it, like I think there is something profound that you can, we can get out of this. Like the idea of something that is pretending to be art but not actually art. It is is AI generated art art because it just seems like it's a calculation of sorts. Unless you count the words that go into it as the as the art form i think that's i mean we've never had a good definition of what art, art is really so i think yeah that just adds i don't think uh, art, what is art is one of those things that's every generation is an open question that gets answered differently so i think yeah yeah that's i think that that does add a, a, a sort of an interesting dimension mm, to this because for sure. there is there is sometimes there can be a message there there can be mm. a, a raison d'etre but um but like not if you're just like a five-year-old going, I want a picture of a big fire engine. <laughs> and it's like, well. um, so it's it's almost like, yeah, like it's computers fooling us into thinking something's art. It's, which... again, really, I, I think the best, in, in with questions like this, I think the best way to look at it is a, is a, a big averaging machine. Yeah. That is That's, what that we is... just saw. That is an average of, a, of beer commercials, right? The average beer machine. commercial, yeah. yeah. And, and that's that's what you get if you, you no matter well how specifically you describe things to it you're getting the average of what you describe kind of i uh, okay the the average french man what is the average french man are we allowed to do that is that is that problematic I want that, to see that's, what the that's where it gets man. a bit dodgy i did i did see it was actually a tiktok i saw the other day somebody um made it uh render an autistic person oh and it's all skinny white men of a particular age uh all sad and you know that's that you know that's uh, you know that's it's ableist it's racist it's there's all kinds of you know Ooh. yeah uh but it's not these could be french not, people again because it's an averaging machine it's not um it, it's it's holding up a mirror to our own prejudice exactly yeah it's not being racist uh, which, it's representing our racism back to us yeah but that's 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 our racism yeah that's that's well it's given me four it's given me four white men yeah yep so are they all sad uh they are they're, they're kind of french looking i'll i'll send it i'll send it oh, to this you the french. yeah yeah yeah, yeah no, I'm, not, I'm not looking for it this bing thing uh it's bing.com forward slash images plural slash create um I can put in, yeah. I'll pop in. I'll pop in the Frenchman into the, into the, into the chat there. Oh, I didn't know there was a free one of these. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, Microsoft Bing have kind of supercharged this one. Yeah. Um, but I suppose like they kind, they, they kind of look a bit French. But <laughs> I was expecting more like I don't know. Stripy tops and berets and stuff like that. <laughs> um, okay, I'm wishing. Uh, who's a famous person? Uh, I don't know. Chris Tarrant. Okay. No one in America is going to know who that is. <laughs> in the style of. He's, he's, he's a good artist. So, oh, I mean, uh, I'll do a Caravaggio first of all. Yeah, no, no, right. Because I'm gonna know Chris Tarrant. 
don't uh, know. It yeah, does look, just... look like Chris Tarrant, but it's very Kyle Yeah. I wonder how much information it needs to be able to mimic a style. Probably not that much, but the quality of the imitation will probably be contingent on how much gets put in. Let's make that one. Uh... I'm going to be playing with this. <laughs> anyway, are we done. Are we done AI. I think we're done with AI. Um, I think I've said everything I need to say. I like. I think there are some uses in it. I know that like people on Fediverse are like generally dead against it. I'd imagine partly because of the threat to like smaller artists, of which there are quite a lot on uh, yeah on Mastodon. But also, I think like. It, it is it is big tech technology um i mean i'm i'm avoiding think... it i'm i'm i don't like it being in the hands of corporations um I, it is mm. i think it is being oversold uh i i, I think people the general it's public over, really understanding how it works allows them to oversell it um i i think the the thing we'll see we'll see it we'll see it in behind the scenes stuff like i think when 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 i think their real customers are going to be uh, corporate Mm. Uh, they're going to be it's going to be replacing chatbots instead of call centers uh it, it it'll uh it'll probably i think it will i think it will end up taking jobs over time or de-skilling jobs and oh, I yeah, think that's, sure. yeah so i think it's it's definitely going to have an impact on whether or not it and i definitely think it's here to stay in one form or another mm. it may disappear from our lives like it may fade into the background and be part of other technologies well no uh, I, I think it, like uh, you you kind of imply like i've used it for uh summarizing things Mm. And it's very good yeah, stuff like that. that. I think I think you know I think there are uses and it's it's very useful in, in certain uses. Um, it, it, I've done it. I've 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 used it to do up a D and D campaign. I've not actually used <laughs> that campaign, but it's like it gives you and it gives you flavor text and everything. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be interesting. I think it's going to change the game a lot. Um, I yeah, like I I like playing around with it, but I I definitely would be worried of circumstances where I become dependent on that technology. On the yeah, technology. yeah, that's when we've got to strive yes. to open it up. Also, yeah, I mean, we've got, we're going. It's going to affect mm. political economy. You know, right? We've either got to get UBI in place or rethink things entirely, right? I, well, we're moving in that direction all the time. I think so. Yeah. There's going to be a, a breaking point, but I think people are like more open to that kind of thing than than ever before. The more they see. The the world is changing faster than ever before. Mm. You know, it's like the 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 time between we invented the 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 axe to when we invented the bow and arrow was probably thousands of years. Mm. Um, but now, like we have uh, paradigm changing technologies that seem to be invented every decade. If it's the smartphone or the internet itself, television, yep. Yep. radio, uh, air travel. Do you know? Like I, I the, the remarkable fact I heard the other day. Right? It took. It was like. Wasn't it like sixty years before, when, from the time when man flown to man landed on moon? Really? Like it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like it's like so in someone's lifetime, they they saw the trajectory of human flight to to the moon. Like we go from cars to moon. It's like that is yeah, that's insane. Yeah, yeah. yeah so <laughs> and and it's getting faster. That's the thing. It may not be getting as audaciously impressive because, of course, we know that the, the moon, uh, the space race was really a Cold War uh, yep, yep. consequence, I guess. Uh, just a, but, my, uh, my, my anxiety is kicking in. Uh, how would you feel about mm -hmm. making this oh, a single topic short one? And we, single uh, topic short one? Short one? Okay. okay. <laughs> That's AI. Uh, thanks. Thank you for joining us. For watching. Hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll be back on making these. Um, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Mm.